Welcome back to Joy News Exclusive. I'm expecting to be joined in the studio by Samson Akligo, who is head of uh, research at Data Bank to discuss the solutions to resolving some of the challenges, deficit challenges uh, facing the country as a whole, leading to the downgrade of Ghana's credit rate. So earlier, the finance minister said Tekpe responded to the announcement that Ghana's credit rating has been downgraded. Let's let's take a listen at um, what he said on the Super Morning Show on Joy FM. We are strengthening our public financial management systems and audit systems. We are implementing the GIFMIT, and in order to sound technical, what the GIFMIT is doing for now is that, you know, all expenditures are being put into the system electronically. We are having significant coverage now. And what this means is that we are matching the expenditures against what has been put in estimate. So that ministries and departments and agencies do not spend outside what they have indicated in the estimate. We are putting internal control systems in place. I'm pointing to this because um, often the solution to many of these difficulties or challenges uh, in expenditure is to put sound systems you know, and, and processes in place. And that is one approach. Um, but when it comes to taking immediate decisive action, then you know that, you know, various society has moved already on that, you know, uh, and we established the committee which implementation uh, recommendations are being discussed. Then we have capital expenditure. It used to be the case, you know, that, you know, most budget assets, including what is called, um, uh, what many have referred to as election year expenditures were on certain projects, you know, during an election year all over the place. So you would notice that when we talk about the overall, since the 2012 overall, nobody has said that we had exceeded our capital budget, you know, by, you know, running all over the place and implementing projects. From the period of the late President uh, Professor Mel, he directed that we should remain within expenditures and he would not want projects to be started only for us to have problems like the one we are having. Through the reinforcement by uh, current President Mahama, we have been focusing on the pipeline. I believe that I had an interview with your studio about the pipeline. And that is because over the years we have uh, often started projects and then not completed them. Gone in excess of capital expenditure. We have not gone in excess. And then when it comes to recurrent, we have not gone in excess of goods and services. The three major components of recurrent expenditure are precisely what I'm going through. Wages, goods and services, and debt service. So you will see why, you know, I'm taking my time to explain, you know, to Ghanaians that even the fixed perception that we have expenditures all over the place and we are running outside the budget does not reflect the reality. We had about seven challenges and we have been working on them down to about three, including grants. We know the problem we've had, you know, with salary is something we have already considered. So to put things, you know, within uh, a certain language which is familiar, like running in uh, budget assessments or expenditure assessments and election year expenditures is what I am describing as not, you know, quite accurate. Why is also considering the fact that, you know, as a nation we cannot continue to have you know, 10 to 12 percent, you know, uh, deficit levels. And this is where I started, I also explained the medium term. This is where I explained. Well, the finance minister admits that government might not be able to 
achieve its target of 9% deficit. It actually could be more. Now, earlier last week, I, on Joe News Exclusive, we investigated the system called the Ghana Financial Management Information Systems, GIFMIS, which is the fourth component of the eGhana project. The objective of this uh, system is to streamline government spending and introduce transparency in transactions, payments, and also create a single account on which all government agencies would have to log in to issue payments and, and follow through with other, other transactions that are needed in, in government transactions. This is expected to in, uh, introduce transparency into the system with the view that it cut back on corruption and uh, reduce the overall deficits in the long term. So I went to the Acting Controller and Accountants General, um, Madame Grace Adro, and I asked a simple question, what is GIFMIS? Take a, take a look. All over the world are working to position themselves in terms of systems they want to put in place, in terms of structures, in terms of people they want to develop, to be able to answer those questions, to be able to account to the citizenry on the use of national resources. In Ghana, uh, government through Minister of Finance and Control and Accountant General, as you rightly said, initiated a number of uh, public financial management reforms to be able to play that accountability role. And one of those, one component of that reform is the, is the GIFMIS. Uh, and what do we mean by GIFMIS? The GIFMIS is an acronym for Ghana Integrated Financial Management Information System. So it's financial, it's integrated, it's to do with management of information that you have. And the GIFMIS, I would say that it's an ICT-based, um, you know, current times, everybody is using ICTC to de drive their business processes, to be able to um, generate reports to stakeholders. Again, it is integrated. When we say it's integrated, what do we give this is integrated? What do we mean by that? Integrated in the sense that you have a system where you have a common database on all your financial management information, where you can pull reports, whether it's on budget, whether it's on you know, accounting, uh, to be able to do you know, report to stakeholders as well as do your own auditing and do your own monitoring and also help in decision making. So give me is under the e-government project and it's funded uh, with a pool fund from the World Bank, DFID, EU and Danida. And overall, let's say the overarching objective of the give me is to improve the effectiveness of service delivery and the allocation of scarce resources. This overarching objective you just told us about was premised or is premised on the fact that there is a unique problem or challenge with our financial management system. Is that what it is? Uh, yes, yes. Unique in the sense that, I mean, you can always get it better. Yes, years ago we had some processes that or systems that we use for budgeting. We had some systems that we use for accounting, reporting and all that. Over time you realize that those systems have become obsolete and they also were largely manual. And uh, we are moving, we are moving ICT, and therefore there's the need to get the new system, new improved systems that can help you manage uh, your resources and therefore in the process improve service delivery. And also not only just improving service delivery, it's also help you in allocation of scarce resources. As you have a very good financial management information system, you know where the expenditures are. You, you, I mean, as you generate reports in the past, it tells you whether that's the priority areas you want to be going into. The eGana project consists of components one, two, three, and four. Component four is to bring all government finances onto one platform, GIFMIS, as well as transition to a full treasury single account for all government funds. This is to enable fuller reporting on all fund sources and users and, at the same time, reduce the cost of domestic borrowing for the government of Ghana. Why is this necessary at all? I think as a nation, we have got to a stage where we need to really uh, marshal all resources and do things right the way uh, the country, other developed countries do it. And as a country, we said we are in the middle income uh, nation. 
most of the time concerns come from the public and even uh, the general spectrum of uh, governance just because if information is not there then people begin to make noise. If uh, transparency is not there, people begin to make uh, raise concerns. What GIFME seeks to do is to put up a platform, more or less a vehicle, uh, a chain, where government resources will be routed through. And it said that it uh, had blocked all holes, put in systems, control checks, said that at the end of the day, the resources government put in will get to the intended beneficiaries. And again, not just getting to them. <clears throat> when they are using the resources, the system will process your information for you. When you finish using the resource, the system will now account for the money you have used for you and produce reports. That shows that, yes, I received so much from government, I used them for this purpose, and now there is the report of using the money. Mm -hmm. So that is the vehicle GIFMIS is producing for us. You know, and again, maybe from the other discussions, we've realized that government systems start from right from the budget preparation, uh, budget execution, budget reporting, and financial reporting. Yes. All these vehicles, government uh, give me a starting right from the budget preparation to the end. Again, you are talking about uh, 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 transparency and accountability. This platform is also providing a more uh, systemic uh, 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 flow for the Auditor General to also even go through the whole system. So the system is running. Auditor General can also, at any point in time, through their audits, go through the system and ensure that whatever the resource, whatever resource government give it to uh, any particular individual organization has effect effectively been used. GIFMIS once is very transparent, smooth, government resources pass through and everybody knows where the resources are going and everybody knows how the resources have been accounted for. Uh, I think a lot of these uh, uh, challenges will be removed. Well, welcome back. This is Joe News Exclusive and uh, today we're discussing the very critical issue that has been making the news Ghana's the downgrade of Ghana's international credit rate from B plus to to B now in the context of that we played you interviews uh, that we did previously on the GIFMIS which is the Ghana integrated financial management information systems in which we spoke to uh, the controller and accountant general and then the director of GIFMIS as you saw there. So like I said earlier, I have in the studio now Samson Akligo, who is head of uh, research at Data Bank. It's great to have you here. Now, I mean, this whole downgrade thing has been in the news and finance ministry has been trying to explain and justify and say some of it is not very fair. Can you, from where you, you come from, tell us exactly what the problem of our economy is really before we start into the the reasons and the excuses all. Yeah, really. Uh, I think that broadly the 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 downgrade uh, really is just reflective of uh, macroeconomic uh, policy management and the fact that our credit race, uh, uh, like a position, has shown some deterioration, especially the fact that we have been. The outlook was changed from positive to negative, indicating that uh, there was a problem, and therefore expectations was that there will be some measures to correct the problem. And getting to the close of the year, they realized that in terms of most of those expectations, uh, we are not likely to meet them. That led to uh, the actual downgrade mm -hmm. to B plus. So basically, it's a reflection of uh, macroeconomic policy management, especially fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I know that the finance minister has said quite a lot about what government is doing to resolve this problem, but what is the best solution to this? So that, I mean, if we are looking at uh, improving in the next rating, what should uh, us uh, as a country be doing? I think that it is obvious uh, to the market that uh, Ghana has a fiscal uh, policy problem. And a lot of these uh, issues are coming from two sides. Uh, in the short term, we realize that the wage, the wage bill, uh, debt servicing, uh, debt payment, and also the structure of the entire public service is too heavy for the economy to carry. Uh, it really is, is, is a, really the issue in the short term. Uh, in the, if you want to look at it, 
as a broader economy problem. We have issues with revenue mobilization. We have issues with the structure of the economy, broad-based economic growth that will allow the country to raise revenue in a more sustainable path. Uh, continuous reliance on few exports, uh, probably what some people call lack of diversification. So uh, clearly, I think that these issues have to be faced in, 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 in two ways. But if we want to solve the problem, really just correcting the wage bill alone is not enough because the issues are really structural. Uh, this year, for example, we are struggling with giving revenue uh, because um, our key exports are, are not doing well. And uh, if you look at even crude oil, which is now uh, the second major uh, export uh, uh, um, earner in, for the country, you realize that the price has not been strong. Well, if it's strong, it affects domestic pricing and con uh, consumption, but when it's also weak, it affects uh, our export position. So clearly, um, you, we are in a situation where we have to look at our economy in terms of the medium term and the long term and also try to face the short term uh, challenges. And do you see indicators that point to the fact that those at the helm of affairs know what they're doing? Uh, the difficult question. I think that we have seen a lot of uh, strong will uh, to see some of the short-term measures corrected. If you, for example, some of the difficult decisions like uh, utility price hikes, the four price uh, increases earlier, in the, uh, earlier on in the year, you could also see that there was a more conservative increase in public sector wage bill. Uh, we, we have really seen some of these tough measures, but because of the nature of the problem, it is difficult for these measures to solve uh, this, uh, I mean, to, to solve what our head, uh, our headache in the short term. Uh, I think that. So, if in effect, there's no short term solution. No, I, I think the measures that have been put in place now would take some time. If, for example, some key, because we still have a lot of exposure mm -hmm. to international commodity prices. So even if we have these measures and revenue shortfalls emerge, what we have a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, even now the size of the wage bill is such that even a two percent increase is quite significant, and then how do we also ensure that you know revenue really uh, increases to compensate for for the increases? Again, we're going to go very soon. We're going to go uh, into another fiscal cycle where government have to spend on infrastructure, where government have to increase spending on social uh, mitigation issues. And of course, you also know our election issues. And these uh, will tighten have, things yeah, further. We, we don't have a government that can sit back and say that, no, I'm not going to do anything. When election gets close, we have to see some evidence of government that is working. So really, I think that we must build consensus as to the way forward. And the solution is there. But most of them require uh, many painful political decisions. And I think that we must take those uh, decisions across painful the Painful political, political decisions. I, I like the choice of words to use. Painful in a sense that people will feel it, right? Yeah, well, for example, and well, it is obvious. You say, let's not uh, pretend that uh, we have make it too a government. Yeah, make it too simplistic. The size of Ghana's government relative to the productive sector is, 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 is just too big. Yes. Uh, you cannot run this kind of uh, sector if you don't have an immediate way to increase taxes to get probably even revenue from sectors that maybe now you're not able to get revenue from. We've, we've attempted a lot of measures to rope in the informal sector into the formal sector. We've put in a lot of stamp, uh, duty stamp collections to take uh, revenue which from the informal sector. Which do not appear to be have not yielding work effectively. results, effective results. So the immediate solution is that let us know that immediately the cost of running our government have to meet the current revenue mm -hmm. that we, uh, we generate. And even if you want to increase it, then we have to really start thinking hard that we have to get measures that to get revenue mobilization. Uh, I mean, when we, look at, when we look at this gift mess platform, for example, which um, by my understanding and in our interrogation of the issue of gift mess is that the objective is to create uh, a single treasury account, uh, put it all on a, a a platform where there will be transparency. People will have access to log on. They will then be able to go into it and, you know, prepare the budget. Is this the solution? The finance minister mentioned that it's one of the, the, the tools, really, that government is hoping to use to clean up things. 
Is, will this be effective, really? No, no, I, I would want to separate the issue of uh, economic policy from operational efficiency. The truth is that as a country, we have a lot of issues. Uh, for example, a lot of leakages. We have uh, so-called uh, you know, ghost names, you know, illegal names mm -hmm. on the wage bill. Uh, for this, the way that, for, for, for example, some of the quasi-public institutions even employ people, uh, it's difficult for the central government to even control. So yes, if we implement uh, this, this kind of uh, financial management, mm -hmm. Uh, not even policy tools, it will help to improve the efficiency of, of, uh, of government uh, spending. And I'm sure that uh, the estimation is that if we're able to do this, we could save a lot of money uh, for, for the government. But also, uh, this alone, I think that if we don't address the policy issues, and we depend on this, uh, these instruments alone, we might come back certainly we're going to have, uh, uh, we're going to have this, uh, these issues. And, uh, because clearly, uh, even the fiscal space is not all in crowded. You have an issue whereby discretionary uh, spending, uh, and then if you put that to statutory spending, you, you realize that you don't really get a means of how do you operate fiscal policy, how mm -hmm. do you cut down, how do you increase, how do you scale back. Mm -hmm. And all these are really because now we, we saying that the government is overspending. And if you look at our tax revenue, wage bill and uh, interest payments alone virtually absorbs everything. So it's not like government can even cut back. What are you cutting back on? Mm -hmm. Wage you have to pay. Start interest payments you have to pay. So this is the difficulty. So what we have seen is that they've cut back a lot on capital expenditure. Is this good to enhance the future revenue generation capacity of the economy as we borrow? So it's more like something that we have to, the truth is that we have to look at economic policy and try to solve the problem from there. And as we do that, operational issues are very key. So KIFA is very important because if we don't plug the, the, the leakages and the inefficiencies in the system, we would also be found wanting as well. Right. Uh, talking about plugging leakages and inefficiencies, in our investigation about GIFMES, I put these issues to the controller uh, and accountant general, and I asked her how this GIFMIS thing, I mean, this GIFMIS platform will be beneficial to the budget and then also to kick out corruption in the system. How would this be used in preparing the budget, for example? No, you know, we, we relaunched the GIFME system in 2009, started the development in 2010, okay. and then started using the system in 2012. Okay. So in terms of the budgeting, we're not using the GIFME as such for budget execution. Yeah. Not even 2012, not 2013, not uh, 2014. Uh, no, I'm, I'm breaking that because the tool to develop, used to develop the budget is not, is not yet ready, okay. even though it's part of the GIFME. Mm. But progress has been made to procure that software, which is another software, okay. another software, okay. Oracle software, to do mm. that budget, uh, you know, development. Mm. Uh -huh. But there are other legacy systems like uh, um, Activate. We have other legacy systems that we've been using to develop the budget. Mm. And from there, we load it onto the system. So yes, even though uh, the, the system we use now to develop the budget is not part of the gift me as a project, in terms of the whole system, we do have a, a software on which we use to develop uh, you know, uh, the, the budget. When what we do now, we develop the budget in another system, mm -hmm. which is outside of GIFMIS. Okay. At the end of the day, we pull that data and load on to GIFMIS. It's fraught with problems, with challenges, okay. because that's a different system. Okay. But where you have a budgeting tool, which uh, I think we are quite advanced in, in, in procuring to set up for the purpose. If you have that software, then it's seamless. The, 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 the process is seamless. You don't have to load data from one to the other. You, you do your budgets in, in, in that software, and it becomes an integral part of it without any human intervention in terms of loading data from one end to the other. Ghana government has a unique problem of budget overlays which creates deficit problems for the country. So I asked the acting controller and accountant general whether with a GIFMIS system such overlays could be eliminated. If you look at the system point of view, it should be eliminated. But is the I mean, it's a human system. It's a human system. Uh -huh, it's a human system. So the way that I'm sure they, as they provide the details, yeah. they will let you know how the system is structured such that if you don't have a budget for your program, the system cannot process your transactions. Mm. And therefore, 
uh, is going to exercise strict budgetary control. They say computer, what you put in is what you get out. Garbage so if in, yes, so if we say that system, don't allow anybody to execute a, a, a transaction on the system without a budget. And of course, that's how we set up the system. It will not, the system will not allow you. So in answer to your question, yes, technically, it should eliminate budgetary, uh, you know, uh, cont uh, co uh, overruns, uh, budget overruns. overrun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it will also help in monitoring of expenditures. Heads of MDAs will not be able to generate reports as to how they are. Um, their, their budget, they are running their budget, how the expenditures are like under the, as against the budget. And therefore help the manager in management of their resources. Corruption in the public service has been a major issue for several governments over the years. Project director of GIFMIS tells me he's confident the full implementation of GIFMIS will eliminate public sector corruption outright. As I indicated, GIFMIS is a, just a vehicle. Just a vehicle. So at the end of the day, all that GIFMIS is going to do is that one government put resource in, onto our platform. The system will control, there are controls in it. If you don't have a budget, you can spend your money. If uh, money has not been uh, appropriated to you, you can spend it using the system. At the end of the day, whatever, whatever, whoever you are paying the resource to, the information and everything is captured by the system. At the end of the day, once you have used the money, the system will actually tell you how you use the money. So with all this information, dubious ways or uh, loopholes where people can easily pluck holes in uh, doing, doing some applications that are not appropriately budgeted for will be eliminated. And as I always indicate, uh, indicate, once information from financial reporting is getting to the people, you know, if you look at these public accounts and all that, a lot of the challenges we are facing now is because financial information reporting are not there. So at the end of the day, you, you, you go through and uh, uh, people have challenges. Uh, I find it very difficult to believe what is going on. But once the reports are there, the detailed information are there, you can have the audit trail through the system to justify why you paid A, B, or C. Then at least the, the, it gives credence to the, to the management of the resource that has been given to in the particular organization. Welcome back. This is Johnny's exclusive. Uh, today we're taking you into the GIFMIS system and then on the back of that we're discussing the, the economy itself and um, discussing solutions way forward. So, so Samson, let's, let's, let's come back to the finance minister's uh, statement today on radio and I'll, I'll, I'll quote something that he said. He said that um, the, the Fitch, Fitch only looked at the short term in downgrading the economy because in the medium term the economy will be more resilient. This sounds more like rhetoric to you, right? Well, I think that, uh, in fact, I've always tried to put uh, some of this statement into perspective. You see, right as you speak now, uh, it is true that when you look at the real sector, Ghana's growth is, is quite strong. You know, we grow, in fact, we, sh we actually growing above 7%. Uh, but uh, I, I think that this growth is not really broad-based and that is why it's not really pulling along uh, mm -hmm. employment creation significantly. So th there is really a, a problem. And the question also again is that if you look at the growth dynamics, you know, growth really is not optimal. If growth is optimal, it should be growing even higher than mm -hmm. some 7%. Uh, so really, if you look at the real sector and you look at the medium-term prospects, it is difficult for anyone to say that the, the, the medium term prospect is gloomy. It's, it's gloomy. Uh, it it's be, not. I, I think it's not, it's, it will not be fair. Okay. Uh, but the, the challenge really is that even the growth, it is critical and important that we allow the growth to pull along uh, job creation. Mm -hmm. But that aside, the main challenge that we have as, as, as a country now is macro, short term macroeconomic policy uh, management, especially from the fiscal side. And the truth is that if we don't manage that thing well today, what we are doing is that we're actually derailing the, the, the potential growth of the real economy over the medium term. And I think that these two things must be put in, in perspective. Mm -hmm. And clearly, 
uh, one of the things that a debt overhang will do, again, with the interest rate environment, one of the things that you do to crowd out the private sector, one of the things that you do is to dislocate private sector growth. If you do that, it means that you are really marking down growth. For example, our growth forecast this year, or medium-term growth forecast is 8%. If we, the macroeconomy does not respond to encourage the private sector to get to that uh, growth level, that we may be seeing about 6%. We are still, that's kind of very impressive growth. Mm -hmm. If you look at even Africa, which is average about 5%. So clearly, uh, I think that uh, we must ensure that the medium term prospects is more of, uh, in totality, uh, gives more, is what I would call welfare maximizing. And uh, it is important that we do that uh, for social uh, security. Right. Uh, one of the problems facing uh, governments is a huge wage bill and, and the presence of a large percentage of ghost names. I put these issues to the controller, and that's what she had to say. In April and June this year, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, urged government to gain control over the wage bill and conduct a thorough audit of the public sector payroll. There are an estimated half a million workers on the payroll, but this number is believed to include a lot of fictitious or ghost workers. The Minister of Finance at a recent Meet the Press with journalists admitted the rising expenditure on the public wage bill is crowding out spending on capital goods and services, and that government's target is to cut the cost of the wage bill to 35% of tax revenue. That's the plan. Give me is integrated, we're doing it in stages. Okay. Right now we've roped in the consolidated fund, the other items, goods and service investment using that system. The next stage is to integrate the payroll into uh, the Give Me system. Okay. And we have a program currently running where we've, uh, we are upgrading our payroll system. You know, the payroll system is on its own, Give Me is on its own. It's on its own. But we've initiated the process of um, uh, we, we, procure, we've, we procure services for upgrade of the payroll, but then integrate it into the gift mess. That, that, is, that is possible. Yeah. We, and that, no, that we are doing that. Okay, we, we hope right. to. That's right. Yeah, we hope to get to that by complete that by end by by end of December. The advantage that comes is the, the sense that you have the strict budgetary control over payroll as you have under capital. Uh, I mean, investment budget as well as the goods and service. Mm. Currently, like I said, you set up the system. If you don't have budget for goods and service or investment, it will allow you. But because the payroll is outside, you know, you cannot exercise that straight budgetary control. But when we integrate, uh, the, the system will check for availability of budget before, mm -hmm. you know, the staff on that, on that payroll are paid. And that is why we are putting the system in place, get a budget, adequate budget for uh, managers of the call centers, so that when we integrate, then you as the head of the department, you have to manage your payroll by the budget and explain why you, you are exceeding it. So if I get it right, then it means that um, um, integrating the payroll system with the gift miss will be the surest way of kicking out ghost names, for example, right? Uh, not, not necessarily. Mm. The way it will handle is the sense that if, I'm a, if, if there's a manager in your budget, you, you, every time you're looking at your payroll budget and the, 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 the actual cost is going up and your budget is running out, you have to sit by and say, what is wrong with my payroll? And therefore you want to ask, I mean, even though you do it routinely, you want to ask, who knows? It may, it may come to a point that maybe a manager will take a hard decision that, look, I have 10 people, I need only eight. Are you getting me? So yeah. in that case, not necessarily, it will help also make health or department be more interested in what is happening on the payroll, which they do now, but not, not, not you know, effectively. For any human institution, checks and balances are critical to ensure efficiency and sustenance. Does the gift miss system have sufficient checks and balances embedded into it? The system has been configured by the technical people. We define the business processes, how we want to do business. You know, that's how we define the processes on the system. We've done that. Um, NITA, by law, yeah. is supposed to provide the wide 
Gated Area Network for every MDA. Mm -hmm. uh, but prior to that, as a controller, we initiated something on our own. Yeah. But by, okay. by the law, we now have to follow through with NITA. NITA. Uh, that one, yes, we are deploying using the, the network connectivity that we have. But as we come in to see, we do have a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, that area of the work is dependent on NITA. Mm -hmm. And that area of the work is very critical because uh, it's, it's, a, it's a system that we are deploying to so the whole nation. So if NITA does not deliver, you cannot deliver to? Te yes, technically. There are various checks and balances. Not, not just the budgetary control. As I said, if you don't have a budget, mm -hmm. you cannot execute. You also have managerial controls in that if, if you are not authorized to approve a transaction on the system, you cannot do anything on the system. Mm -hmm. For example, if you go to, let's say, uh, a department, if the head of department is supposed to authorize a transaction, it's the same thing we are defined in the system. So you cannot just log on because you, know, you, you want to authorize transaction. So the checks and balance in the sense that if you don't have authority to be one to be on the system, you can't be on the system. Two, if you can't, you don't have the authority to do process something on the system, key in data, generate reports, do you know budget execution? You cannot do it on so the system. So these are checks. So these are they, these are checks on the okay. uh, you know on the system. So yes, they are checks. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Journeys Exclusive. My name is Stephen Nt, and I have in the studio Samsung Akligo, who is head of research data bank. So I mean, away from this gift miss thing, I I I was shocked to learn that Ghana's uh, debt. Uh, and the death stock has quadrupled from 9.5 billion at the end of two, two, 2008 to 38.3 billion by the close of April this year. This is scary, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm a layman, so these figures definitely scare me. Is it not scary? Uh, I think they're scary. Yeah, certainly it can be scary if the money is not used uh, in a way that will create a capacity to, to repay the loan. Uh, so uh, clearly, I think that uh, if we are approaching 50%, we need to ask ourselves critical questions. And again, these are some of the indications that the Finch rating is giving us that, uh, hey, when the threshold that you are approaching and the fact that interest payment and your wage bill alone absorbs significantly your tax revenue, you have to wake up. And I think that uh, debt sustainability should be a key issue uh, for the Ghanaian economy because we have traveled this So the problem before. is not the debt you have, but what you use yeah, the debt for. Yeah, what you use the debt for. And the fact that, you know, it's, it's very simple. When you get expensive money in the capital market in particular, you must think about the future because you are really paying interest on this money and then you also have to repay the principal. And if you look at some of the debt management policies, or even one of the reasons where we went for the new sovereign debt, the 2023, is that some of them will be used to actually restructure the public debt and retire some of, uh, uh, some of the debts that we, we have. And I think that that approach, especially for a country like Ghana, is, is not very um, laudable. So really, in a, in a lay economic terms, um, when you have a debt, like Ghana we have, mm -hmm. what will be, uh, I mean, what, what would you use the debt for that makes it okay? And what would you use the debt for that will make it not okay? Okay, maybe I'll give one example. Uh, uh, in lay economic terms, uh, if I can break it down, when you are going for maybe sovereign debt, a uh, dollar denominated mm -hmm. debt that you are paying seven, almost 8%, and you, you are bringing it to the country, then, for example, you have to invest in uh, either critical infrastructure that will lead to economic growth and expansion. Your revenue will grow, and when your revenue grows, it means that you'll be tax revenue. You'll be able to generate more, it's just like uh, the way the private sector works. So you are generating more revenue from the money that you borrow that you'll be able to pay back the money and still keep some for yourself to do some of the basic economic functions that you do uh, that is that is a dynamic so and uh, if you don't do uh, a clear analysis you will not be able to to give an example but if i have to exaggerate assuming that um, we know that uh, when we build a very big power plant in tema and we sell the energy to maybe the industries 
uh, maybe VACO, for example, will be able to operate and VACO will be able to pay back for the energy consumption in a way that will enable the country to service the debt like quickly, then you are really borrowing rationally. If you borrow expensive money, 8% dollar denominator, to, for example, support broad-based budgets, and some of it goes into the wage bill. Wasted. That is, that is very problematic. Mm. So these are some of the... These are some of the basic things that we have to do. But the clear direction is that if you, uh, I think that in public sector management, if you have the data, you do the diagnosis, and then you should be able to look at a cost-benefit analysis before you even go and borrow. And then the legislature and the key policy institutions as a check must ensure that that, that environment is created before we even go to, to borrow, or else we should debate it carefully and sometimes even say that we're not going to go for this debt. Right. Uh, this is Johnny's exclusive. The director of GIFMIS tells me there, there, there are prospects for, for GIFMIS and like Samson is saying, when GIFMIS comes into full implementation, the transparency and accountability that it comes with is good, but it's only one aspect of the solution. The future for financial accountability and transparency looks good when the GIFMIS system is fully operational. What's the expectation of GIFMIS in the next five years? Uh, in simple put, government will be able to produce a very sound, accountable financial management system as a nation. Uh, good budgeting system, good uh, revenue generating interface with the GIFMIS, good financial recording, good financial reporting, and very transparent financial management system. And I think this is what uh, in the, the masses and the public are looking for. Through the GIFMIS, as we speak now, government has used the GIFMIS to prepare its 2012 financial report. And for the first time, within a matter of uh, 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 two, one, two months, the financial report of government was out. Again, as we are in, uh, we just started October, the financial report of, uh, of government for the month of July, from January to July, is ready. And it has, uh, it has been gazetted, and you can find it at the website of Control Accounted General. Now, almost, uh, uh, we are getting to a stage where month ending by the next month, 15th, government should to be able to produce accounts and that is what we are working to and we are very sure that by the end of 2013 by ending of january government financial report should be out which to uh, to us is one of the things we the uh, constitution mandate us to do the optimism expressed by the director of GIFMIS, Hayford Ba Adade, in my interaction there. So I do hope that your enthusiasm is also as high as his. Um, let me take some of your comments. Uh, Kulo Isa Ibdani Ali Gurungu uh, says that this is good by them. And he said again, good idea by GIFMIS. And Jawin Tete Apenyo uh, says that this is work in vain. Kinsley or being Neymar, you say that the only antidote to is to is to, is to remove uh, the government in 2016. But before that, there should be a demonstration against government. Well, uh, that's your that's your opinion, and uh, you're entitled to that. And Vincent Vincent Fenzi uh, Chikudu VP says sup. Ghana for life. Uh, well, uh, and Paul Kwabina Obin says, ah, this thing would never work in the NDC led administration. Uh, yes, I use GIFMIS in my financial reporting. It's really better compared to MTEF and BPMS. These terms we don't understand. You could have written them down so we'll get a better understanding. But I reckon that you're referring to the old system of. Uh, 
financial reporting. And Kulo, again, says this government is working hard to solve the problems, worrying on the end. So let's hope that GiveMes in collaboration with government shall operate. And Jimmy Ajite says GiveMes should work very hard on behalf of the citizens. My question is that how do I know whether the government is really making good use of our money? And Moses uh, Ajo Kache Joe Kapi says, yes, I'm in Ghana, I'm a Ghanaian, I'm not a Ghanaian, I'm a citizen of Ghana. But I think the power uh, manager don't know. I, I'm not sure what you're saying, I beg your pardon. And Kulu says, in fact, with GiveMes, our borrowing in Ghana should, will minimize, if possible, eliminate it totally. And uh, KD Wanda says, anything that the human hands manipulate will never combat corruption. And uh, Kulu again says, our economy will grow well as soon as gift miss supports government and uh Jafaro Amidu Kenyatta says, when was this established? I think that the government system started operation sometime in 2006, we're told 2005, 2006. And Kulo Isa Abdani again says, for corruption, let's help government. If not, no, 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 it can stop. Well, that's where we, 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 we will. Newman Stanley uh, Mamata, you say that I'm just confused because when you refuse to pay tax, they come after you. And when you pay the tax too, they spend it without accounting for it. And what a tour is going on in this country. And this is a better Ghana we were promised. Well, those are your views, and thanks for sending them uh, in. Uh, so, Samson, your final comments. We have just about a minute to wrap up. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the current problem that we have in, uh, honestly, we must look at it more like uh, an opportunity to reshape the economic um, policy framework. And uh, the issues really go deep down uh, beyond uh, just uh, short-term macroeconomic management and, and probably what we have been doing, uh, 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 what I would say in terms of every day, like the budget. And it has to do, it has to do a lot with the structure of the economy and the way we have actually engaged you know, our polit uh, polit political decision makers. And I think that as much as we, uh, we have issues with the way things are going now, it's important that we work in partnership to solve the, the, I mean, our economic problems in a, in a way that will be long lasting. Than, uh, because when we put pressure on the government to face the problem even very quickly, what you'll be saying is that you're going to see four prices probably Scale. increase in an unguided way. Uh, and then you're going to see, for example, utility prices increase 75%. Uh, At the same time, labor is also putting pressure on government to increase uh, their wage bill. Uh, we also complain about probably unemployment. And sometimes, really, the size of the public sector also comes as a result of the way people are employed in the public sector. So clearly, I think that uh, there, is, there are two things which I would want to end this conversation with. Let us come together in what I will call in a more conscious building way to shape the economic future of the country so that the issues of debt, especially debt is not always bad, but it's not only about debt, it's about do we in the budget, as I said, if you have statutory payment, these are wages are something that government have to pay because people work. If you have interest payment, government cannot default. And we are saying that just these two alone just takes all our tax uh, revenue do we think that this is this is really more like even bad uh, it may not even necessarily be bad decision it means that the structure of the economy itself uh, is not very uh, it's not going to deliver enough economic justice for for us in the country right thank you very much uh, samson akligo is head of research data bank my name is Stephen Enti, and thanks to you for sending in your messages uh, join us again for another exclusive on monday